Great. Welcome to the uh, Data Science Learning Community Book Club for the book I am in the process of writing, Web APIs with R. Um, today, we're going to be talking about uh, automatic retries, basically getting doing multiple requests to get uh, paginated responses. Um, I'm going to breeze through the like definition of pagination a little bit because I know for sure we went over that last week. Uh, but um, you can follow along at dslc.io slash WAPIR. All right. Yeah, I, I know that I started Rec Perform Iterative last time, but I didn't get all the way through it. And several people, or at least, I don't know, some people had to leave. So we'll talk about it in a little bit more detail. All right, so again, I'm going to go through pagination, just skip through that. Sometimes things come in um, piecewise, so the, the responses get broken up and you have to tell it, hey, I want the rest of the responses, basically. Uh, there are multiple strategies that different sites, different APIs use for pagination, and we're going to go through kind of how to do that. Um, all right. So we go through and we read how to do it. All right. And I, I mentioned there's this function rec retry that um, basically will, if the API tells you uh, how how frequently you can hit it, it will slow or it will um, pause the amount of time that it tells you to pause and then go on if you set max tries or max seconds. Um, I'm going to go into this in more detail in a later chapter, but that's a, a thing uh, that is use, very useful when you're doing pagination because you're definitely going to be hitting the server, the, the API, multiple times. And a lot of times the API will tell you to back off for a little bit. All right. So uh, this rec perform iterative, it was added in uh, hitter 2 1.0 right at the very end, um, like right as that was about to be released to CRAN. It is a drop-in replacement for rec perform, perform. And so anywhere where you had a request, instead of putting rec perform, usually I would put rec retry, and then you can just say rec perform iterative. Um, and uh, they have these iteration helpers that are built in functions for this next request argument. So next request is the function that tells rec perform iterative how to decide what the next request is. Um, and then max requests is another important argument. It tells you, tells the um, function how, uh, how many times to try. So by default is 20. Um, I, I think 20 is kind of like exactly the wrong place because when you're experimenting, you should start with like two to make sure you have it set up right. And then once you have it set up right, probably you want to set that to infinity inf so that it'll just keep going through and get all the results that you asked for um but uh yeah that's it okay <laughs> and then what i'm going to do now is go through all the iteration helpers and i think i had gone through the first one uh in the previous example all right so the first one we're going to talk about is iterate with offset and here offset almost always means like is literally page in the argument. So the param name, um, but sometimes the param name might be offset and that's just how do you tell the API um, where to go? Like what, what page number of responses to return? It also has these arguments start and offset. That is, you know, start at page one by default, and then offset is how many pages to skip at a time. Usually it's one. So those two, you almost always leave as the defaults. Um, and then there's this resp pages function that you give it. This is the, the real meat of it. It's how do you tell uh, this iterator how to, or when to end? How do you tell it how many pages there are? Usually, um, uh, oh, and it uses that to to update the max requests function or the max requests parameter on this call. And so, um, 
you know, let's say you you set max requests at 20, but then you call this and your response resp pages function says, oh, there are only three pages. Well, it's not going to go through and do 20 response or requests. It's going to just do three requests. Um, so yeah, that, we'll we'll see an example of what that looks like. And then finally, there's a resp complete, which is a function to check if a given response is the last page. Usually you won't need that for pagination because you're going to tell it, or sorry, for this type of pagination, because you're going to tell it how many pages it has. So it will just go through those that many pages. Um, let's see. Um, this shorthand example here uh, is just something that you might give for a function is if the response comes back and doesn't have anything in it, if you get an empty body, that's one way that sometimes, you know, that indicates, okay, you got to the end. Now, don't always just do that by default because some APIs will have an empty page in the middle for whatever reason. Uh, but that's just an example of the kind of thing you might have to insert to get it to stop. I did have an example, can't remember which example that I was looking at that doesn't ever actually end. It just starts giving you empty pages and it'll keep giving you pages forever that have nothing in them. Um, and so that's where you would need something like this. Um, and th in that case, it doesn't tell you the exact number of pages. Uh, and yes, so that uh, argument, and I will say just a little bit of an aside, I don't like the names of a lot of these arguments because like resp pages is a function, but there's nothing about that argument that sounds like a, it's a function. It sounds like it's an, an integer. Um, and likewise, resp complete is a function it's an argument that it's asking for a function. Um, so in both cases, you, you give it something to figure it out. And so I will show you uh, hard examples. And so, yeah, if I were naming these, I would I would want it to be something like resp pages FN, uh, you know, something that tells you, or, or um, I don't know, some, I would want a standard oop, that makes it clear that it's a, it's a function. So just underscore FN would be enough for me. Or or get rest pages is uh, an example in the chat. Something like that that tells you um, that it's a function. But anyway, whatever. That's, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, and there are lots of these in this whole iteration section um, that I think it's a little bit hard to, to see. And so you have to read carefully and look at the documentation. All right, so this first simple example, or rel relatively simple example, is this OpenFVC uh, API that I've been playing with. Um, and so here we're doing this candid candidate's request. We had set up this whole query before, uh, and it's just looking for a certain, or looking for the, the info about the candidates. And if you just do uh, rec for form on this and pull out the response, um, it gives you a page of 20 results, but it tell it has this other section, uh, this pagination count that tells you there are 173 pages. And so before we had just done 20, uh, just done one, one call and we got back a result. It looked like we got everything, but it was only the first page of 20. Um, versus I'm gonna show you how to do this just to, you know, again, if anyone's following along, if you actually run this, uh, it can take a very long time, um, especially if you are using the the default demo key because it'll cut you off more often and you'll have to keep retrying. Um, and it might even tame, time out and fail if you're just using the demo key. So if you're really playing with this stuff, I definitely recommend getting the real or signing up and getting a real API key. All right, so here again, I set in that rec retry, have it do, uh, up to three tries, and that's just telling it if you um, if the API says to slow down, pause as long as the API tells you to, and then try again, and it'll do that two times, basically. So it's a maximum of three tries. All right, and then on the rec perform iterative, we've got... Um, so yes, so Kevin asked, do any APIs tell you how many total pages of content there are upfront in the first response, for instance, feels like they should know that. Yes, that is exactly what this, um, this comes in in the first response and it says there are 173 total pages. 
And so if we look at the rec perform iterative call, we have this rest pages function that's taking the response. Um, and it's uh, it's saying, okay, the, res the content is rest body JSON resp. And if you just take content pagination pages, that is the number of pages. So that's what's being returned to our, or via our function. So when rec perform iterative, does the first call, it will get back this 173 and it'll change max rex from inf to 173. Um, there actually is by default a progress bar on rec perform iterative. And so uh, it will tell you how far along you are in the process. And if we do, so when we do actually do this call and, and perform it iteratively, it gets a list with nine um, results, that's not right. Uh, I think I had a, a cutoff in here somewhere else because it's not 173, obviously. Oh, um, yeah, sorry. Pagination count versus pagination pages. I confused myself. Count is the total number of, of responses, total number of records that there were in this. And so 173 responses, 20 up to 20 per page. That's where this nine came from. Sorry, I hadn't looked at these notes in a couple of weeks now. I forgot how I set this up. But yeah, so this this pages is the number of pages. All right, and so it got nine responses. So the next piece of this um, is, oh, uh, sorry, I, I have another example. And then later we're gonna go through, okay, what do we do with the, uh, with those nine pages, how do we parse them? But we'll come back to that um, because they all parse basically the same. All right, I have another example of this where there's this other API, uh, crossref.org. And um, I'm going into this API and just trying to find uh, like papers or other documents that mention the word APIs. And this one, if I do a single perform, pull out the response it has this message field and that message field has items which is how many uh sorry that is how many did you get um but if you do uh the total results it's telling me there are fourteen thousand total results um and in this case uh and again, a big warning on this, don't actually run this. Um, I think I did run it just to make sure it worked, but it took a very long time um, because it's trying to paginate through 14,000 responses. Um, and this particular API actually has a separate method that it recommends if you're doing uh, pagination, which we'll talk about because it's a different type of pagination. Um, but okay, so if we're doing it with the iterative here, Again, we're doing iterate with offset, the same kind of thing. The name of the parameter this time is offset instead of page. And to find the number of pages, we are looking at that um, pagination messages, uh, total results, which actually, okay, I couldn't remember. This one is, that is the number of pages. Um, that's not right. What did I do wrong? I think I copied something, copy pasted something wrong here. Um, I'll have to check that because there's it's 706 is how many it actually gets. So these two things are not uh, agreeing with one another. Um, and I will update that in the notes at some point to figure out what I did wrong. Um, because that looks like the total number of like actual results. Yeah, if you multiply that times 20. So I think there are two different things. And I uh, have a copy paste error in here somewhere. Because uh, just, you know, behind the curtain a little bit, I don't actually do these calls in the notes. I do them and then copy paste it into the notes after doing some editing, because I don't want to do the call every time I'm building the book. Um, but yeah, so this one, it would, it did this call, it ran, it got 706 pages of results. And again, the way to extract the results is pretty much the same for everything. So we'll come back to that. Um, Yes. So yeah, the rec progress function is a different kind of progress bar. That is, if you're waiting for like one thing to transfer, it'll tell it's it's a progress bar based on like the um, number of bytes that have transferred versus uh, 
Rec Perform Iterative has its own, I mean, it's using the same technology under the hood, but it has its own progress bar function or setting. All right. Is it, um, I mean, I guess we've had questions as we go, but is there anything else to uh, stop for? Looks like we're good. Okay. So the next type of iteration that uh, there's a built-in help for, helper for is cursor pagination. Um, we go back to strategies. Um, John, actually, here, sorry. I actually have one yeah, question about the previous slide. Um, sorry yeah. for being late. Um, no problem. With the uh, with the retry uh, setting, um, is that's for the whole call, right? So like if any one no. of the pagination calls, oh, oh okay. Yes, yes. Okay. So it is for yeah. each of the calls. So e oh, each, of the call. each okay. one, it'll try each one up to three times. Ah, and okay. that's actually, I'm making an, a wrapper for this type of thing because, you know, you have max tries and max recs, and it's not super clear what that means. Um, the max recs is how many pages will you try to get? So how many different requests will you build? And then do whatever you do on them. And then retry or max tries is how many times will you try each of those up to three times? And so really, okay. like if let's say this had been 20, that would really be a possible 60 calls to the API if each okay. one had to retry twice and then you did 20 pages of results. So max racks uh, doesn't doesn't care how many retries, it's just how many unique paginations you're doing. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and so it's, you know, what this rec perform iterative is doing is it's taking your request that you built and then editing it to build another request and it keeps building new requests. And so that's, you know, the argument does make sense that it's making separate requests. And so uh, it does like, it literally does rec perform on each of those requests. Um, uh, to cancel, you can like control C or escape or depending on like what system you're on, uh, the same way you would stop any other uh, call. And as far as I found, it's pretty good about actually passing that through curl to the actual server call that it is making. Um, but it's like that is something to be aware of that sometimes once that thing is off to the other server um like it the only way to cancel like the way to cancel within code would be all of these settings of the max requests and the max tries um, but if it happens like after you make the call and it is repeatedly making way too many requests, you can control C out or, or escape out and it'll stop making the future requests. And actually, um, I think it's a, there are arguments in rec perform iterative that it will actually return what it has gotten so far, um, which is nice. So you can kind of get partial responses back. Okay. So uh, cursor, again, if we flip back to the, the strategies, um, this crossref.org has this deep paging strategy where it gives you a cursor or a token parameter instead of a page parameter. It's kind of a just a level up from normal um, pagination. And so here it has a parameter named cursor or whatever the API might call it in this kind of thing. Um, it has an argument resp param value, it's, which is again, a function to convert a response to the next cursor. Um, in this case, each response is going to send you back something saying where to go next, which is a little bit different than before. We were just getting a total number of pages. Um, and this function will return null if there are no more pages. So it again, it, it's going through and saying, okay, the next value is this. If it gets to a thing that says to stop, then it tells the function, okay, there is no new page. Um, uh, let's see. 
the so for the parameters i've seen cursor token sometimes like next page token um yeah <laughs> there's and which is apparently from youtube um different names but it's usually unfortunately often token which also means like api key is often token or the thing you get back from oauth is a token um so cursor is the more like accurate the, the more precise wording um which pretty much only means this id and, and what it is is it's basically an id to go look up the cached result that you have waiting for me um cursors tend to be short-lived uh usually uh what it is is it's literally cached on the server and then 10 minutes later it'll clear that cache or maybe a day later or it depends on the different systems but it is telling it you know okay, I've already gotten all these responses and I'm just going to send them a little piece at a time. And the cursor is kind of the code that it is using to look that up. Um, oh, and you, you only give it the one function of uh, what is the next page or the next cursor because the style of uh, pagination tends to just be, it gives you a next cursor, next cursor, and then eventually it'll give you uh, an empty value saying, okay, we're done. Um, and we'll see that in a second. All right. So again, there was this cross ref, uh, site. Um, if we go back to this, we have this cross ref, ref request, which is, we're saying we want to look for APIs within their whole, the word APIs within their API. And now instead of doing the pagination setup, we're going to, um, tell it that we want to use the cursor-based thing by saying cursor equals star. That's just what this particular one does. It says, tell us that you want to use cursors by sending them this argument with uh, a fake value, basically, a star saying, hey, what is the cursor? Um, again, uh, this one's going to be slow if you actually run it, um, but it, it lets you get through everything, so it can be useful in this case. Um, and again, if we did a single one, it's going to send back this message. And since we put the cursor equals star, it has this next cursor value in the first response. And so we can take that and build up our full one. Again, I'm just throwing in a rec retry in case it times out. And uh, we do rec perform iterative with iterate with cursor. The, the argument is named cursor, and then the way to look for it is we take this response and uh, look for content message items. Um, sorry, we, we're looking for content message next cursor. This particular one, I think this is the one that it will keep giving you a next cursor forever, but it will not have any content in it. And so you need to check this one in, in this case to make sure to see. Does it have anything? Oh, it didn't have any responses. Then don't send the next cursor, no matter what it calls it. That's what's going on here. Um, and again, it got the 706 pages of results. Um, and yes, as Jim said in the chat, that's really bad. You got to watch out for that. Um, because if you if you just went with kind of the default of, well, surely when they're done, they'll just send me a next cursor that's an empty value. And that'll tell my thing to break. And if you did that, you would literally just keep trying forever or until you canceled um, or until they stopped you from trying anymore. Uh, it's bad design, but I, I, like my experience with reading a lot of API documentation is every API has bad design somewhere uh, because like there's so much usually. So uh, on server side, I would like, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's good design for their use case because maybe sending an empty cursor would be hard or calculating that there is no cached value or something like that is something that's slow on their end. Uh, but it seems like it would be better to do that. It, it really should send, you know, a, a empty next cursor or just not include that parameter if there isn't a next page. Um, it's weird to me that it doesn't do that, which makes me think that probably under the hood it is like it has code that is literally just changing a page number to uh, you know query plus page number becomes this cursor and uh they uh 
just pretend that it's a, a special pagination, but who knows? I mean, you know, I, I didn't, I haven't looked at the code for this site. Maybe there's a really good reason that it works this way. I don't want to disparage it. Um, okay. Yeah. So next page almost. So if you do the, the literally page based, almost always works. Page 20 of that query is always page 20 of that query. And what it's doing is it's literally running the query and giving you the 20th page. Um, versus a cursor is a cached thing. So it doesn't have to rerun the query to figure out what to send you. It's going to, it just looks up that cursor. Um, and a lot of times, like if you go to, you know, uh, you can see it on websites where the URL will just have a question mark page equals 27 or something. Um, you're, that's technically, that is the get API call with pagination, um, which means also like if you're trying to look at uh, something like a simple email program or something like that's effectively what this is. You could get your 20th page of, of emails by doing uh, iterative calls this way. Um, yes, so you could skip to the last page if you're trying to look up new things in something that, um, you know, that is uh, something you're hitting every day that's paginated. You could save what page you were on. Now that's always dangerous because something server side could change the order of results. But if you're sure that's not going to happen, you know, I, I got page nine last time. I would start at page nine because it might not have been a full page. Uh, but yeah, you in most cases, if it's page day, paginated, you know, using offset, then you can just start at that page and, and continue. Um, again. Big, big asterisks that make sure you know that it's always going to be the same for the first eight pages. Um, there was actually one that I was scraping um, that uh, I think, I don't know, to be cool or whatever, they would randomize the results. And so I actually, I don't know if they were doing that to try to make it harder to scrape, but what it meant was I uh, had to do many more calls and then take the unique values that it returned. Um, and so if you're designing an API, don't, you know, make it send the same thing back if I'm giving you the same thing. It's just, that's how it should work. And all right. Um, um, if you know the request and the page number, then you can get to it. Um, and if you, if you know the first page and the page number, you can get to it generally um, in this type. Now there is one that's coming up where they actually just literally send you a URL for the next page. Um, a lot of times those are literally just pagination and they send it to you weird, but, but sometimes it's um, a seemingly random URL. Like it's basically, here's where the cache is for that result. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. All right. So, which is literally this. All right. Iterate, iterate with link URL. Um, the, so this one is, uh, hold on a second. What I was just talking about where it tells you where to go for the next page of results, like a literal full request URL for it. Um, and so the, the arguments on this one, there's an argument rel. This is an like HTML uh, our, uh, property of links. That is the relation of this link to the pre or of this URL to the thing you were on. And so usually it'll say rel next in the thing that it sends back. That's the one you're looking for, the one that is the next page. A lot of times that response will also have like rel equals previous to see what the previous page of results was. Um, uh, and, and it might have other relationships, like I, I can't remember examples right now, but it, you know, some other relationship to the current page could be in that header. Um, all right. The function that you send into this one is called resp param value, and it's a function to convert the response 
to that next cursor, the next URL. Um, in this case, again, it will be null, or you should, that function should return null if there are no more pages. And the canonical example of this type of um, iteration is the GitHub API. But setting up to use the GitHub API uh, takes a little bit of work. You have to make a GitHub account and set up an access token and all these things. And so I wanted to find something that is uh, just completely free and open to use as a demo. And the one I could find that worked this way, um, there were actually two. Uh, one, I think this is the one that was Disney and, you know, Disney's uh, litigious. And so I went with the this metric, the gathering um, API, which is to find uh, information about Magic the Gathering cards. Um, here, I was just looking for a card that, or any cards that have the name uh, or the word B in their name. And so this is the basic request I was making. Uh, if we do a rec perform and we look at the header of the response, uh, we can find this link um, piece. So it, the header has um, a value in link and in link it has you know this url blah 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 rel equals last and rel equals next and so here you can see that it's actually telling us oh there's going to be five pages so that's the last page but the next page is page two and again if you look at that that request is totally just a normal normal paginated um request it just is telling you that in a weird way Sometimes these URLs are more random. They aren't just a normal request at this point, but in this case, it is just giving us this uh, uh, result or this this uh, page to go to. All right. And so knowing that, armed with that information, um, we can get... Uh, I don't remember why I did this here, but oh well. All right, we can um, do the... Re Perform iterative with iterative or iterate with link URL. And the nice thing about iterate with link URL is it only has that one argument, rel, like, or I guess it's the two arguments, the function and the relation. But um, almost always it is rel equals next. And if you run out of pages, it doesn't have a rel equals next. And so it'll be null. And so most of the time, if you're using iterate with link URL, um, you don't have to do anything. It'll, the default arguments will work. Um, and then again, we're telling it next request infinite and it got five pages, just like it said that we should. So cool. And then, um, and yeah, again, if I were working with this one, really, I would probably just use offset pagination and, and pull that information out. Although it turns out that this is really straightforward. So maybe not, but, uh, it, it, seems weird, <laughs> like it's more confusing than it needs to be. All right. And then finally, I'm going to do one um, uh, for my for our own, but I'm almost definitely going to submit this into Hitter2 because it's missing iterator function. It really should exist. I saw lots of examples of it. Uh, but people do love to reinvent the pagination wheel. Um, so you may find cases where you have to make up your, or you have to write your own um, iterator functions. <laughs> the, my favorite example of people liking to reinvent this wheel is the Slack API, yeah. depending on which endpoint on the endpoint API you call, they have two different pagination strategies. Um, they changed it, but they haven't hundred percent changed over. And so there are some that use the old strategy, some use the new strategy. Um, and so, um, yes, yeah. so uh, I think that um, Federica is talking about like a, a way that it might show up on the, on a web page. Um, if you have a question there, let me know, Federica, I'll need a little bit more info, but all right. Uh, so one that I saw is um, the, it's exactly like that next URL thing, which they have built into H or hitter two. Um, but instead of it being in 
the header of the response, it's in the body, which seems logical. Um, you know, if you're going to do that kind of thing, sending it in the body, that's not too crazy. And so this one I felt like should be a um, iterator and it wasn't in the, the pre-built ones. Uh, the example I have for this one, and actually this is the case where there was um, Disney was the other case, but this one is Dungeons and Dragon, Dragons Monsters in the officially open uh, portion of their um, their product. And so they're not going to sue for using this. So um, yeah, so uh, we will talk about our best kind of the end of this section because like, I think he even says somewhere in the help in there, if you can find an API, it's just, you should use an API. Uh, Arvest should be kind of your fallback if you can't get the actual API version, um, just because APIs tend to be, this is the thing that we want you to use. And if they don't give you a thing that they want you to use, then you can you know, brute force and scrape it. Um, but we will be talking about Arvest at some point. All right, so this example, we're gonna get Dungeons and Dragons Monsters from this uh, Open 5e API. Um, the base request, I'm just telling it that I want uh, a limit of 100. That's like how many it's going to do at um, uh, per page, I think. Uh, sorry, no, it's gonna do, that's how many it's, yeah, how many it's doing per page. Um, and so I took that iterate with link URL and built an iterator for this to find, to get all of the pages basically, because it's saying that there are 2,439 total uh, responses, but we didn't get all of those. So let's figure out how to do that. And the way we do that is instead of saying next rec equals iterate with link URL or different things like that, we give it a function directly. Um, th that function always takes the response and the original request as its arguments. Um, and so we're saying, okay, we're going to take the, the response and look for this uh, next value inside of the body, inside of the, the JSON body that comes in RESP. And if it isn't null, so if, uh, if that thing that it sends back, sorry, if this thing isn't null, then um return uh the the url of take the rec but to replace it with the url now remember back when we were talking about hitter two i don't even know if i talked about rec url because that's not that's like completely replacing the entire url of the request most of the time you don't want to do that because you know you lose all of the baseline that you had built up um you you know you're not appending and you're not doing any of that. You're just completely replacing the entire URL. But in this case, it's telling us a URL in this next value. So that's what we want to do. Um, and that's it. That's it. That's our entire iterator right there. It's pretty simple. Um, what I'm not showing is just by default, since we didn't return anything, that means if that thing didn't exist, we're returning null. Uh, that's what R does kind of by default. And uh, again, we're saying max request is infinite. And voila, we got 25 pages of results by doing that, which is gonna give us all of our 2439 responses. So I feel like this function here really should be a built-in iterator because it's iterate with link URL uh, in the body instead of the header. Um, the only reason or the only problem it doesn't have a good way to name it because they kind of took, uh, they overgeneralized that name when they named the function. Um, oh, and the reason, so the reason that we do rec URL here, you might be thinking, well, if you replace the entire URL, didn't you just totally kill the rec? But this means that we kept any like headers about our authentication. We kept the retry rule. We kept, uh, you know, anything else that we have set up in the request, but we just replace the URL that we're doing the request at. Did that, uh, or anyone have any questions about that? Pause for a second, get some water. <laughs> 
All right. So all through this, I've been saying, oh, we got 25 pages of results and that's great. Um, but those that's 25 pages of responses, that, you know, a list of 25 responses and dealing with that, it can be painful or it could be they gave us this RESPS data function in hitter two. So this function um, takes a list of hitter two responses and uh, which is so like rec perform iterative, all of these are going to return a list list of responses. And this takes that list um, and a function called, that they call resp data, which again, this is probably my least favorite uh, argument. So the argument to resps data is a function called resp data, which is how do you get the data out of the response? Um, it's a So that's a function and it, it you pull everything out of each response and merge them together into one thing with RESPs data. Um, usually, or often at least, you'll need more than just something like RESP body JSON as your RESP data function um, because it needs to be um, like the actual response that you can, the, the piece that you want that you can string together with each of the responses to make one single object. Um, hopefully I have a, uh, a hard example of that to, to hope make that clearer. I can't remember, but we'll see in a second. All right. And the reason, so the reason you want more than that is you want to get just your actual result, but not, you know, you don't want to get the pagination info out of that response and you don't want to get uh, any other headers that they have. You just want exactly the response that you are trying to string together. And so the example I do have, at least the first one is OpenFEC. Um, if you recall, we got this uh, big list of um, 100 or uh, uh, nine, I think it was nine pages of responses. Um, and so we're gonna take each of those responses and parse it. And so that's where uh, in, in the case of FEC, the response has this results so in the body of the response, there is a results object that is actually what you want out of it. That's all we need to do. We don't need to do anything else fancy, but we just need to tell it, okay, rest body JSON and just get response or results. And if we do this rest data on the nine pages that we got back using that parser um, and then typify it because uh, it's gonna be a big nested list, um, but Tiplify actually works really well here. And we get this nice tibble that is all 173 rows instead of just 20. Um, let's see. So, you know, nice, clean, easy. Uh, it's as if we did 20 calls and then like pulled out the responses, uh, did some cleanup and then, you know, strung them all together into this one object. Well, RESPs data, is doing all that for us. Um, it's kind of funny. Usually I like to say the names of the arguments and the function calls that I make, but I think uh, I, I think I was kind of protesting here that this FPC resp parser, the argument is resp data inside of, inside of resp's data and that such a bad name. Anyway, <laughs> uh, resp's data also has some friends. Um, so back in rec perform iterative, it has an on error argument that tells it either to stop or return. So if it hits an error, does it just stop what it's doing and give up or does it return what it got so far? Um, or sorry, does it return all those errors mixed in with the successful responses? And so in our list, some of the things in the list might be a successful response and some of them might be error responses. And so there's RESPs successes, which will pull just the successful responses out of our uh, list of responses. And RESPs failures will pull out just the failures. So you can see, you know, what errors did I get in this list of responses? Um, let's see. Oh, and then also just kind of related, there is RESPs requests. Um, just to see 
uh, how they were called. So it'll send you the actual request that it sent all of, you know, if you have nine pages of result results, it'll send, it'll return nine requests that you made. So you can see, okay, what did it do? Um, that's useful if like the fifth one failed you can see what the fifth request was and maybe make it again or, um, you know, edit it, figure out what went wrong that way. Um, uh, later, in a later chapter, we're going to see some other ways to deal with like retries and errors and things for these failed requests. And so uh, we'll talk about that more later, but that's where this failures and requests can be useful. It's kind of figuring out, okay, what else do I have to deal with? Um, how can we how can we deal with this? Oh, and then there's also another thing we're going to see later is there there are a couple other um, like iterative like uh, functions that you can just tell it. Um, you can create your own list of requests and then send it to um, I think it's RecPerform Serial and RecPerform Parallel. Um, Again, we'll talk about those in a later chapter, but they're the same idea, just doing more uh, more copies of requests or doing more requests. All right. And that, okay. And that's why I didn't have anything else. That is the end of this deck. Um, yes. Yeah, so by default, it will just stop if it hits an error, but that is the argument. Uh, which I can't seem to move back to right now. Something locked up. Um, that's weird. So hopefully I'm still here because uh, my windows are locked up. But uh, there is an argument that you can tell it, um, and I can't remember right now, but whether to stop or continue when it hits an error. Um, <laughs> all right. So that is all the pages I tried to uh, switch through. <laughs> Um, yeah, there we go. So yeah, it has that on error argument, which is either stop or return. And, um, it's not super clear named. So yeah. Um, so yeah, Jim's asking what's the best way to run and study the code without the slides. I, uh, am not cleanly set up with that right now. It will be to uh, see the book version, but I haven't gone back and done that. Uh, so right now it is just, yeah, load up the, I mean, I would say instead of using the slides, download the repository of um, the, the dslc.io slash Whopper, um, clone that repository, pull that local, and then run the code blocks within the slides instead of rendering the slides. Um, yeah, anything else? So my plan for the next one, um, the plan was to have the, have it ready by now, but I didn't get it yet. Uh, I, I do plan for us to go through, um, like authentication in the next session. Uh, that's the big piece we're missing. We've done some things where you just send a key in the arguments to, of the query, but there are like real APIs usually have more complicated ways to authenticate. Um, and so we're going to go through that next week. And then after that, we'll be able to do pretty much everything as far as fetching responses from APIs. Um, still a lot that we haven't covered, but this is the meat. Uh, so that should be pretty exciting. All right. Well, uh, if there aren't any more questions, I will see everybody on Slack. And uh, I look forward to going through uh, the remaining pieces. All right, Jim, go ahead. <laughs> I will pause and let him type his question and I will close my windows since uh, things are failing. Um, I, I wouldn't worry about pulling everything out right now um, because I think 
I mean, I, I think the QMDs of the slides are the easiest way to go through it. I don't think I would recommend just pulling it out. Um, if you want, like, you know, it's, you can uh, pull that code out and play with it on a GitHub repo, but I think that's a different thing than what I may mean to make right now. Um, so we'll see. It, maybe it'll be a useful thing <laughs> to me. Um, and if it's useful to you, great. Absolutely do that. All right. Cool. I will uh, stop sharing and, oh, and lose track of the chat. And so I can't type finish. Where are you? There it is. All right. And I will see everybody on Slack.